What is up everybody, this is uh, Justin Wong. I made a tweet about doing an AMA video. So ask me anything and obviously I will answer your questions. So let's let's go. From um, at Corsay6, that time I was reincarnated as a slime or overlord. So if some of you guys don't know, it's an anime. Overlord's obviously a very popular anime, season three now. And that time I was reincarnated as a slime just came out. Two episodes in and I'm gonna already say that I'm gonna go with reincarnated as a slime just because of a couple things. When you think about slimes, creatures like obviously from Dragon Quest or from other RPG games, they're really weak. But this one, it's the main character. Like literally this little blue slime is the main character. And you know, he just got some dope magic. He just keeps getting stronger and stronger. So, you know, I'm really all about those really like those short-term animes where the main character is just like just OP and does whatever he wants just for like the cool factor and the fact that it's a uh, slime just you know taking over shit it's pretty tight at hey sherry um, boobs or ass seriously so I would say during the summertime I would probably say I'm more attractive to the to the bottom compared to the top I don't know why, maybe it's shorts, short, short seasons, you know, who wear short shorts type of thing. And I would say during the winter time, I would say I prefer the top, the boobies. Just because it's very good to cuddle with, I would say. Um, I'm, I have very high um, temperature, so I guess like I'm just overly warm. So a lot of times, like if it's during summertime and you're trying to cuddle, I'm really not about it just because like I'm gonna overheat. I'm gonna go probably past my body temperature. So because of that, I would say winter time is best time to cuddle because that's where hibernation season is. So I'm gonna say boobs on winter and ass during summer. Another question from Gas Power at Gas Power. I'll ask you again, whether you sleep naked or not. So I'm gonna say obviously I, you know, I'm not like James Bond or Brad Pitt or anything like that. So I'm gonna say I don't sleep naked just because I actually like having clothes on me. I know it's kind of like contra, contra, like contradictory because, you know, I have high bo uh, body temperature, but I can never sleep without something on me. So if I don't have like a shirt or a blanket, like I just can't sleep. I'm gonna have trouble sleeping. So like, I really need something to cover me at all times. I just feel like I'm protected because when you're sleeping, you just feel vulnerable and it's one of those things that, yeah, I just can't do. I can't sleep naked. At hitbox underscore Sora, what do you think will be the next product slash service type that will enter the FGC? We have everything from controllers, headsets, arcade cabinets, to even digital currency and bracket makers. What next do you want to see? The next thing I would love to see is more high-end product sponsorship. So let's let's say this, like for example, I know we do play on PlayStation 4 for tournaments, right? That's standard. But most players do bring their own laptops, right? They do bring their own like nice laptops and you know, shout out to Asus for just to play Street Fighter, right? Just to play Street Fighter. So for example, like I know um, obviously Echo Fox is sponsored by Asus, but I would love to see the Capcom Pro Tour sponsored by Asus. Just because, you know, they have amazing laptops and you could take it on the go, play Street Fighter. You know, like a lot of times you don't want to like carry a PS4 plus a monitor while you could just come like carry a, a portable laptop. So obviously that's why a lot of people were also excited for DBZ on the Switch because even though it's not the most optimal, but at least you could still get to practice, you know? And I wanna say, like, yeah, laptops would be pretty awesome. Um, also, like, more branded, like, player stuff would be pretty awesome. So, like, Daigo sponsored by HyperX, right? I would love to see a Daigo headset. Like, just specifically, like, not just Daigo wearing a headset on the poster, but more of, like, this is a Daigo headset. So I think player branded stuff would be pretty awesome as well. I think we're we could definitely do that. So those are kind of like my, my two things I would look forward to right now. This is from uh, Aeon 903. Very um touchy subject. Since MVCI flopped and probably won't be at any other Evo, which MVC game would you like them to be in the Evo line up? Assuming they bring an older Marvel game to the main stage. Well, obviously there was bad press about Marvel Infinite, but I would love to see Marvel Infinite 
just at EVO just once, just because it's a really fun game. Like, if you really play it, it's fun. I think it's an amazing to watch as well when you watch like the community run tournaments and you see how hyped people are and like the crazy stuff that they're doing. It's actually a very, very well designed game. Obviously, the the release was bad. They sh I would say they should have waited till um, Infinity War drop. Probably boost the sales up a lot for sure. And um, if I had to choose an older game, obviously I would choose Marvel 2. But I'm gonna say Ultimate Marvel's Capcom 3. Like that, like that series of just Marvel 3 at Evo was really epic. So many winners. So many people that were like in the top eight that were just like not the same obviously besides like the the chris g's the f champs and myself but even then like there was just so much passion during the marvel 3 finals so i would say bring back ultimate Marvel's capcom 3 for evo this is from uh rio uh chinky thoughts on melee and any interest in playing it smash ultimate also, did you meant to say hobbies, LMAO? I actually meant to say boobies, so that's why the boobs and ass question was there. But besides that, um, I always wanted to play Melee, but the fact that like I would have to quit every other game to focus mainly on Melee, especially from the start, like I just can't do it. Like obviously I'm just a professional Street Fighter Five player, so it's just really hard to just say, you know what, I'm gonna start over and just only focus on Melee. So. I don't think I can play Melee, but um, Smash Ultimate, yes, just because it has a, a lower learning curve compared to Melee, you know, there's no wave dashing, there's no L canceling, you know, there's no like, um, what do you call that, like where you stand on the cliff and they can't, you know, jump on it, like obviously in the new Smash games, both people can hang on the the, ed, the ledge now. I would say Smash Ultimate's um, gonna be easier to learn. I did play Smash 4 and I said Diddy Kong was too good. And um, yeah, so I think I have a really good uh, knack for like seeing like who's good character, who's fun characters. So I'm definitely gonna give Smash Ultimate a try, especially it's on Switch and it's on the go, so I could, you know, take it anywhere. Like the fact that I just have like a 3DS, like I love 3DS. So the fact that Smash Ultimate is on the Switch, which is also portable, yeah, I mean, I think everyone's gonna play it for sure. Or at least try it for like the first couple of months. So this one is from Mr. Mista Lama. What is your usual regiment when practicing or playing fighting games? And what is your usual mindset when going into a match? I guess my usual regimen when pr practicing or playing fighting games depends. If it's the release, I just sit there, training mode, try all out the try out all the characters and which one I think like fits well with me and which one do I enjoy the most, and then that will decide like my main character. And then go online, you know, or play with your friends and locally and just you know learn learn new things, learn new strategies, try new strategies and just see what um what else happens and also twitter event hubs are amazing sources to find out how to be better at fighting games just because they post all the footage of what other people find when it comes to new ones so i would say that and then for let's say after a while the game is fleshed out how do i practice just watch a lot of videos for street fighter 5 at least i watch a lot of videos of player videos just because you want to know the players tendencies players habits so you kind of have the edge on them and some information when you fight them in the next tournament. Um, also, obviously, practice like scenarios that you would possibly be put in by X character. So I would practice that as well. So that's really important as well. And what is my usual mindset when going into a match? Um, laming them out, seeing if they crack. But because I have the information from previously from watching all those videos, that will tell me what do I need to do. Do I need to be more offensive? Do I need to be more defensive? Do I not? Do I need to press less of this button? Do I need to focus more on this strategy? You know, watching videos will tell me what I need to do to get the win as fast as possible. This is from Lunar Eclipses. When did you start making enough money for fighting games and content creation to become your life? Well, I would say I never really done content creation until now. This is probably like my first like go at it really. I didn't really make enough um, back in the day. Like um, obviously I moved to California in the end of 2009. And, that's and that was because of off of uh, peer pressure, I would say. Um, I wasn't making any money. I was working at like uh, Dave & Buster's, F.A.O. Schwartz in New York, going to school. And you know, obviously minimum wage was pretty low. I think it was like eight, $8.50. So anytime I was I saved money, I would use that to be my airfare and all that stuff. So I actually saved some money up and like I went to California 
with only $1,000. I just said, you know what, I'm gonna take this risk, move to California with only $1,000, live in James Chen's apartment, work at Family Fun Arcade to kind of like bring up the money again, right? And then go to these tournaments. And eventually it just worked out. I got sponsored by uh, Evil Geniuses and then now I'm on Team Echo Fox. So yeah, I mean, it was really a risky roller coaster. And it just worked out, like it really worked out. Obviously I was scared just because like, man, do I have to move everything back to New York City? But yeah, in the end, you know, Lady Luck was on my side. What's your favorite country to go and play a tournament? So do you mean like favorite country like in general or does it have to be favorite country and play a tournament? So we'll just answer in two ways. My favorite country to go to in general is Tokyo, Japan because I love anime. I am an otaku. I buy all the anime figures. I love their food. I love Japanese culture because I'm 25% Japanese, I guess. So I would say Japan, but let's, I would never say Japan tournaments were good because I really do think Japan tournaments are very bad. So in terms of what country is the best to go to and play in a tournament, uh, I mean, USA has the best tournaments. Like Colin Brigger is definitely the best tournament of all time, in my opinion, just because it makes me feel like it's in the middle of of something esports related, but also keeps that grassroots feeling that everyone can just enjoy with that raw passion. But let's say because I'm from USA, I have to go choose a different place that's not USA. I mean, I'm gonna say Canada Cup. Does Canada Cup count? I mean, that's a different that's a different country. So yeah, I'm gonna say Canada, just because Canada. Um, it's a warm, it holds a warm place in my heart. Like Lab Chi is an amazing host. He makes sure that everyone has fun. The after party is obviously always amazing. Um, so I would say Canada Cup's gonna be my favorite uh, country to go to slash play a tournament in. Oh, this is from Gaz Blake. Do you think your record of most EVO championship is beatable in the current era? If so, who has the best chance of beating it? You're three ahead of Daigo, four ahead of Infiltration, five ahead of Sonic Fox, and six ahead of Tokido. You're going to extend your record though, right? So obviously, um, I'm still playing tournaments. Um, I still do good. Uh, I'm still going to extend my record if I can. So obviously, I'm gonna try to pick up more games and enter more EVOs and try to extend the record as much as possible. Um, I would say the only person that has a chance of beating it at this rate is Sonic Fox. He's still young, so talented, and like Daigo Tokido and, and Info, they're really focused mainly on Street Fighter. So the fact that they have to really try to win such a, I would say, super competitive game compared to all the other ones, right? We uh, Street Fighter has probably the most pro players in the, compared to the other games. So I would say Sonic Fox, who's like just the master of just playing multiple games at very high level, has the highest chance. Like at this EVO 2018, he won Dragon Ball, but he also got third in Justice. He could have gotten two, like just, you know, two, two, two titles that year, like this year. So I would say Sonic Fox definitely will probably beat it in the future if I don't accept my records. This was from at Sivart Asol. Who are the top five best fighting game players currently and of all time? Currently, it's kind of hard. I'm gonna say Tokino and Sonic Fox are definitely shooing for top two. Um, but for three and three to five, this is no order, by the way. Let's go with Problem X from the UK, Hungry Box from Smash Melee. For sure, Hungry Box, yeah. So that's four. And the fifth one, I guess we can always go for the default answer Daigo. That's the default answer, and I think everyone would accept it. So let's see, and also the five best fighting game players of all time, Tokido. Tokido's always my number one in terms of like the best fighting game player definitely of all time. Um, obviously Daigo. Ryan Hart from the UK, he's very, very good. He's one of those guys that people don't give him a lot of credit, but Ryan Hart's definitely in my top five. Can I say myself? I'm gonna say myself, yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna say myself for number four. Cause number five could, no, like this, everyone's really close. Like it could be Kazunoko, it could be Zien, it could already be Sonic Fox. Let's go with um, Kazunoko. Kazunoko, the god of anime, uh, still really, really consistent on multiple games right now. Probably the only multi-game fighting, multi-fighting game player that plays different, like high-level games at the same time, but popular high-level games, like with lots of competition, right? Obviously, Kazunoko still does really good in Street Fighter and Dragon Ball and Plus Blah's Blue, Guilty Gear. Like, yeah, I'm gonna say uh, Kazunoko for, for the fifth one. At 
from March Suru underscore. What did you do before you were sponsored to get the tournaments you really wanted to go to? I worked at Circuit City. I also worked at FAO Schwartz, Dave and Buster's, and I went to school. So I saved up like my money. I don't really I didn't really spend money back in the day, and I used that to go to tournaments. And um, you know, we obviously had hotel rooms where there was ten of us in a room because it's expensive, right? And uh, I would say, yeah, that was the that was the, the best, the only ways that I was able to go to tournaments compared, unless uh, a country where like Mexico, Australia, Asia, like they like, hey, you know, we want to invite you to our tournament, and uh, can you please come? We'll pay for your your flights and and hotel. And I was like, all right, cool. So if it wasn't like the tournament being tournament sponsoring the players to come to the tournaments, it would just come off my own pocket that uh, I worked at my regular job and also whatever I won, I would save that to the ne for the next tournament. So I never really got, like, I never won money for it to like be profitable. It would be more like, okay, I just put this on the side for my next flight and, ho and split the hotel costs with like whoever I'm staying with. So struggles real back in the day. We're very lucky now. So this is from at Dime Shock. What are some of your favorite games outside of fighting games? Do you have any specific games you absolutely adore that maybe nobody would guess you'll like? I love puzzle games. I love RPGs, Final Fantasy, Golden Suns, those type of games. So any specific games that people would not know. Um, so I, you know, I guess I talk a lot about Magical Drops, a very amazing puzzle game online. Um, but a, a game that not a lot of people probably know about is uh, another puzzle game called Money Puzzle Exchanger. So it's a, it's a similar game to Magical Drop and it deals with math. So I know the stereotype. So yeah, I love that game. So pretty much the concept of it is, is uh, to blow up like your bubbles or well, in this term, currency. You would have to take five one, five pennies, well, five one yen pennies and, and that will turn into a one five yen penny so two five yen penny, two five yen, sorry, two five yen will turn into one 10 yen, five 10 yen will turn into one 50 yen, two 50 yen will turn into 100 yen, and five 100 yen will turn into one 500 yen, and two 500 yen will, doesn't turn into anything. So the goal is obviously to blow up the 500 yen, to get everything up to 500 yen and blow it up. So I was very good at that puzzle game and I really enjoy it. Um, another one I would say uh, that doesn't get a lot of credit is Golden Sun. Golden Sun was an amazing RPG on the, the GBA. Um, the first two were amazing. You could do multiplayer. You could like uh, kind of bring the data from the first one to the second one and then keep those characters. So you have like eight main characters, right, to use. And it was really cool. Third one was kind of a flop. That was on the, the 3DS, I would say. But the first two, amazing. They even had a versus mode where you could take your team versus, versus your friend's team and fight at it. It was pretty sick. That game was godlike, actually. You guys gotta bring up Golden Sun, yo. Shout out to Isaac. My man Isaac in there was godlike. This is to at Andronius88. What's your opinion on the FGC right now as it is? Any idea how to move it forward? It's at a weird place. I would say it's obviously at a good place compared to back in the day where a lot of players are, you know, having sponsorships. There's so many tournaments, so many pro tours from different companies. I would say that's amazing. Um, but I would say it's just so, so much traveling. I hate it. I wish we didn't have to do too much of it, but it's it's nice. Any ideas how to move it forward? Mm, I'm gonna say more invitationals. More invitationals with like big prize pools instead of just a tournament. I think that would be pretty nice. Like I know we have E-League, right? But I think having more events outside of E-League would be pretty good. And not just for Street Fighter, it's for like every game. So obviously for like Tekken, Guilty Gear, Smash Brothers, like I think that would be really good to watch just because it's something different. This is from at Highwind786. Big fan here. Have you ever thought of quitting the FGC even once? Actually, yes I did. In uh, 2008 where I would say fighting games were at the brink 
of dying. Probably the lowest EVO ever. I actually didn't want to go to that EVO at all, but Seth Killian really convinced me to come to this EVO. So I kind of scrambled like the money out of my pocket just because like I said, there was no sponsors back in the day. And um, you know, like I was, you know, working like just like a retail job, living check by check, going to school. So family was poor, couldn't really do much, right? Couldn't even ask them for like a borrow a couple hundred. Um, so yeah, I almost quit there and it's kind of like, gonna focus but you know Seth Killian really told me hey man please come please come I can't tell you what it is but it's gonna be something really big at EVO and that year it was Street Fighter 4 it got announced and they had the you know like the um, like location test there at EVO they had exhibition and yeah Street Fighter 4 changed the game with the whole GameStop tournament and that kind of like made me decide to like go this full time one last push and see what happens and here we are um, nine years later that I'm still here making this video being part of a uh, Echo Fox esports team and playing Street Fighter 5 traveling around the world for a living and and making sure that um, I'm a positive influence to you guys this is from at fatality underscore 89 what do you think about the current state of Pokemon Go when do you find the time in your life to hunt Pokemon what are changes you wish they would make to the game so I think Pokemon Go is right now is amazing compared to the first time it came out obviously it was so cool so big but they didn't think that we are ver pokemon fans we're maniacs right so the fact that we're maniacs we're gonna catch everything in like two weeks right so because of that there was no update for a really long time so i kind of got bored of it and i just left for a while then i came back just randomly and you know it was they had johto and then they just released like pretty much um, Ruby. So I was like, oh shit, I'm back, right? So then they had raid battles, that was really cool. Poke, um, then they had like these quests for the Mew. So, so, so sick, right? They, had, they added so much content and it just kept me around. So I would say um, I love it right now. And when do I find the time to hunt? I actually don't hunt locally. I only hunt when I travel. So because I travel almost every week, that's the only way I can play Pokemon Go. So I guess that's what really gets me like able to complete my Pokedex and everything. I would say the only time I do go out locally when I'm home is uh, when there's community day where you get the chance of shinies. So obviously I gotta get my shinies, right? So any changes I wish they'll make to the game? Yes. Get rid of EX Raid or make EX Raid more stable, where like, like if I do a raid somewhere, like, come on man, like, I don't want like to get a EX Raid pass from like a different country, a different state where I'm not gonna be at, or even an area where it's just like, I can't get it. So one time I finally got an EX Raid pass in Las Vegas where I live, and um, it was inside the airport, past security. So you're telling me, so I had to buy I would have to buy a ticket to get, so I could get past security to play. Now let's think about that. It's Mewtwo, he's hard. He's not, he's not a person I could just solo, all right? Or even do with like a couple of people, right? So I need probably, what, like maybe seven other people that are obsessed with Pokemon Go, like myself, to buy a ticket. That's probably like a hundred bucks, right? Probably minimum, maybe minimum or it's like 70 bucks. Right, let's go. Let's go that way. Let's go there. To go inside to try to to fight this Mewtwo and then have a chance to capture this Mewtwo. No, like stuff like that's bad. So obviously I have Mewtwo now because he became a regular raid. But uh, Deoxys is an EX raid, and yeah, I'm probably not gonna get a Deoxys unless someone traded to me or make or when they turn down to a regular raid. So I would say yes, fix the EX raid or get rid of it. It's whack. And that is um, my last question, I would say. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. I know it's a lot of questions, and uh, let's do it again. And ask me, like I said, ask me anything. You can talk to me about anything FTC, boobs or ass, um, anime, food, travel tips, all that type of stuff. Yeah, so I'll see you guys soon. Uh, please look out for my video. Make sure you subscribe and all that good stuff and share it. And yeah, I'm gonna keep doing more and show some more love to you guys, do more content and all that good stuff. See you guys.